Uh, let's start the meeting for January 5th, 2021, Frontier Regional, 6 o'clock. Um, uh, we have a presentation that we're going to do right off the bat, and we'll give it to Darius. Control D, Darius. <laughs> and that's all I have to say about that. Congratulations. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Um, I would like to welcome tonight, we have Isabel Brown, a senior here at Frontier, and her parents, Beth Brown and Eric Brown, and um, Frontier Regional School District's 2020 Superintendent Academic Excellent Award recipient is Isabel Brown, a senior from Deerfield, Mass. Um, kind of a quick overview about Isabel. During Ms. Brown's years at Frontier Regional, she has maintained a maximum honors and has a 4.45 GPA. In addition to her academic success, she is serving as president of the Student Council and has been a member since 2016. She has been in the class government since 2019 and was a founding member and has been president of Interact, a community service club that was developed in 2019. Um, wow. Ms. Brown has also been a member of the Drama Club since 2016 with leading roles in both Annie and Harvey. She also has been in the Frontier Marching Band and Wind Ensemble since 2015, has been a sectional leader and a member of the band council for two years, and a member of the Frontier Jazz Baron since 2017, and has participated in the Quab and Music Valley Festival in 2017, 19, and 20. And then the Pioneer Valley Symphony Youth Orchestra in 2018, and the Amherst Community Band since 2016. So quite the musician as well. Um, <clears throat> Isabel has received maximum honors in every quarter since 2015. It was the winner of the Swim Team Spirit Award in 2019, the Medusa Mythology Exam Award in 2018 and 2019, the National Latin Exam Award in 2018, and the Bosch Alam Book Award in 2020. So I said all these wonderful statistics and facts about why Isabel should be selected for this board, but what we're missing here, I guess, is the, is the human one. Um, Isabel is just a fantastic person. For those who don't know her, you should get to know her. She represents all the values that Frontier wants to see in our students. And, you know, I got a couple quotes from her teachers. Ms. Varnon stated, she brings so much life to her learning. She seems almost alive when she's challenged and connected. She enjoys talking about the nuances of the arts and finding deeper meaning when she's in what she is learning. Ms. Moore, um, great government teacher said, Isabel is not only a great student, but a wonderfully creative and curious person. She has many talents and truly enjoys learning. She's a pleasure to have in class. Isabel is planning on majoring in mathematics after leaving Frontier, is considering the Notre Dame University, Lehigh, Holy Cross, Clarkson, Case Western Reserve, and Rensselaer Polytech Institute. So I'm hoping, I imagine she is too, that she'll be able to choose from any of those, and I, and any of those would be. Um, a wonderful fit for her and would be honored to have her. So I would, we would wish her the best, but she has one more semester with us. Um, I do want to recognize the 2020-21 Superintendent Academic Excellence Award, Ms. Isabel Brown. Did, did she unmute herself and come on the screen? Yep, there she is. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi. You, you didn't know, normally have to give an acceptance speech. Um, <laughs> this is our first time doing it um, digitally, so it's kind of an interesting way. It's a little bit obviously less formal and being in a room gathered by people, but um, I do have your award here and I kind of will pass it Ooh. right underneath the keyboard <laughs> too. I actually will save this in hopes that um, our senior assembly for uh, awards night will be in person. I'll be able to hand this to you in person then. Um, usually before we kind of hand it back and forth. Um, and unfortunately, Isabel did also did not get the um, the wonderful um, chicken dinner at um, the, the tech school and meet the other recipients uh, in Western Mass. It's been one of those other things that were you know, was chopped was was chopped due to COVID. Um, so, um, but it, you truly is what you were. It's, I couldn't have give this to a better student. You were what we what we wish to have all our students be like at Frontier and. Um, and thank you. So I guess the second round of applause. Yay. Thank you. You're welcome. Dad must be proud of you. 
Very. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so that concludes the award. <laughs> I would give you a stand. I would give you a standing ovation, but those don't look good on Google Meet at all. So. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for uh, thank you for winning the award and doing a great job in school. And you know, it sounds like you like music, so hopefully, hopefully, music will be in your future. Uh, that would be nice. I, one of the things I was looking at with the colleges was a pep band or marching band for school. I bet you can get some good recommendations from people. <laughs> so. Well, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Evan. Take, Take care. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, we're going to review some minutes tonight. Uh, we got a few of them. We have a regular meeting from December 8th and two special meetings from December 10th and December 29th. I'd like to approve. Move to approve, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Is that you, Phil? Yeah. Thanks, Phil. Uh, roll call. Bob? Yes. Lynn? Yeah. Olivia? Yes. <laughs> I'm, not looking at the, I'm not looking at my screen. I'm typing. Sorry. Uh, Judy, yes. Mary? Yes. Damien? Uh, yes, and I'll just note I was there for the first two you mentioned and the last one, the 29th, I had missed, but yes. Okay. Um, Keith? Yes. And Melissa? She's saying yes. Where is she? She was here a second ago. Missy? Oh, you're on mute, Missy. You can just wave. A Sorry. Uh, yeah, I also wasn't uh, around for the last Board of Health meeting, which... 29th? Yeah. I mean, I, I can't, got there, but I got there after we had done our... I think you could. I think you could still approve the minutes. And correct me if I'm wrong, Bill. I usually, if you weren't, you weren't there, you abstain. Usually, that's kind of what I. So you can put me yes on that too, and then abstain for the last one. Thanks. Yep. Sure. And Bill, you're the last one. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Judy, I guess just for the same as uh, Missy, same. Yeah. I yes for the first two and abstain in the last one. Yep, got it. Okay. Thanks. Where's Olivia? I'm not Olivia. Where's uh, Shelly? I'm sorry. I'm here. Yeah. You want to give a financial report, please? Been a busy yeah. night already, so. Yeah. So 15 warrants were reviewed by Mr. Halla. Thank you for coming in and working with Donna on that. Uh, the total was um, $1,546,145.36. Um, and I did share with you the expense reports. I'm happy to take questions if you have them before I keep going. Shelly, not a so, question about the stats, but I had the same trouble. I couldn't open the re those reports either. Okay. That's I'm interesting that you You've never everything, had issue before. No, everything comes over from, from uh, Gmail to Comcast, except those reports say I need your permission, and when I click on it, it denies me access. Okay. I'll do what I can to fix that next time. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so we continue to monitor savings or overages and accounts, um, but there's no concerns to report. You know, We're just kind of keeping track of things to see if by the end of the year we can reallocate some expenses back to our revolving funds. Um, but nothing major to report there on general fund. Uh, I did give you another school lunch update. We've been talking about that month to month. Um, our net income year to date in the school lunch program is a negative 22,000. Uh, because we did have a little surplus at the start of the year, the current balance in the revolving fund is a negative $13,640. So again, something we're going to have to rectify by the end of the year. Um, I don't anticipate that that's going to change. Um, based on projections, we're going to be looking at ending the year probably closer to a negative $30,000 balance there. 
Um, one thing new to report on this month, as we started talking about uh, next year's budget, we took a much closer look at school choice enrollments and our school choice numbers do look to be down right now compared to last year. Um, where we ended the fiscal year. They look at the June 30th number to project what you're going to get the following year, but then come the new year, they look at October 1. So I do expect that we'll have an adjustment there. Um, some of that, the decrease in it, um, money is related to a decrease in special education claims, but some of it is also directly related to students no longer being enrolled. Um, George and I did talk about what the reasons for that could be. Um, we don't always necessarily track that, but we do think that perhaps some students went back to their home school or their home district um, instead of school choicing or maybe our homeschooling instead. Um, and then on a positive note, uh, we've requested reimbursement from the four towns of almost $100,000 for COVID-related expenses. Um, several of the towns have already let me know that they're going on the next warrant, so we'll be able to replenish our um, primarily school choice account, but some general funds were used to prepay for COVID expenses. Um, and there is a small amount of funds that we haven't requested yet because we're still waiting for a couple of things. So it won't be another significant chunk, but there is some money still out there that we'll get back. That's all I, I have for an update. I heard Conway has some extra money in COVID that <laughs> they're dying to get rid of. Yeah. Burning a hole in our pockets, I tell you. <laughs> I mean, Conway is welcome to contribute greater than their share to Frontier Regional. Can they help us with our lunch program, like $22,000? <laughs> COVID, so, you know. <laughs> Sorry, you know what, no. Though, but it, to, to be really honest, if the choice is contributing more than our fair share or sending it back, I think the whole town would vote to contribute more than our fair share, despite the fact that it would be Deerfield, Waitley, and Sunderland who would be benefiting. We would thank you, Phil, from Waitley. <laughs> Phil, could you start that conversation between Tom and I and get that rolling for us? <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. Oh, uh, Does anybody else have anything for Shelly at all? Okay. Uh, next is public comment. Um, I just asked Don if we had one, and she said, yeah, I sent it to you. So I have it on my phone. If you could bear with me, the print's a little small. and I'll, It's from CPAC, and it's it's a nice one because we just had the same one in, in Waitley basically thanking us. But FRS uh, U38 CPAC would like to thank the members of this committee for their ongoing support and special education students. We hope that you will continue to give special education other – vulnerable learners the option to access in-person instruction regardless of what model is in use for the rest of the school community. And it's thank you from Holly, uh, AJ, Carrie, and Crystal um, from CPAC. So it was, it was a nice letter and, you know, that's good. Uh, Olivia, is your is your daughter around tonight? So she is. I am. Hey, you guys are on one screen tonight. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> what do you have for us? So we haven't had a meeting since the last time I presented. Uh, we did try to do Spirit Week, but it was virtual, so kids tried to participate the best they could. We did have Pajama Day and Twin Day. <laughs> Not really sure how that went because we were all virtual, so we tried to make the best of it. Um, then students are, some of them are excited to go back hybrid on the 11th, and some of them are not, but that's to be expected. And that's about all I have. Well, thank you. And You're welcome. Maybe, maybe next month we'll have some other news that's going on. You're doing a great job. Thank you. I hope so. <laughs> Um, unfinished business, uh, anti-racism and equality committee update. Um, I do have to know if like pajama day should be the opposite, like dress up for school day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. From the top down, like from the top you down. Have to make fun of her now, right? Exactly. Um, the, uh, anti-racism equity committee, um, 
is going to pass this month because they haven't had a lot of work days since the last time they gave a report. And they are gearing up um, student activities and such, and they're going to be looking forward to reporting that in February. So it's going to be staying on our agenda, but they, they don't have a report for this month. <laughs> and and you want to continue on with COVID? Update? Yeah, COVID up. I mean, this this particular group, this is another one of our standing items on our agenda. We We obviously all met last week. I think everybody's up to speed that we're, we're watching those numbers this week. So far, they're um, okay. But if we're going to get a spike from New Year's, you're going to start seeing it probably today, tomorrow, and Thursday. So, um, and continuing from there. So, um, you know, we made that call, and the, the boards of health we've been in conversation with. And so, you know, Thursday evening, um, it's kind of like, well, I'll go around, call the chairs of boards of health, and find out what they're feeling. Um, if they're going to call a meeting on Friday or not to uh, make a decision to go um, remote or continue remote or in place, we are expecting to go back to hybrid on the 11th. So they would have a meeting to um, to continue the remote if they thought the, the indicators weren't such. So that's the game plan that we have now. So that's kind of the, the COVID update. Oh, um, we do have, um, we hope to have the, we had all the uh, 38 teachers, not teachers, nurses have the antigen um, tested. Uh, we took the test in training rather. So we're ready to do antigen testing at all the elementary schools. And we hope to have Frontier um, trained by the end of the week. We have a train to trainer model, so it shouldn't be a problem. So we'll be ready to go when we go back to school to have those tests available um, and ready to roll out as well for those who are symptomatic in school. We will get a, uh, an immediate test. So um, that's kind of the, uh, the COVID update. Bob, this is kind of a COVID related question, but um, I trust everybody saw the email from the gentleman involved in the hockey programming from Greenfield. And I, I, I was a little annoyed when I read that because I thought we had made it clear over the last month and a half that we make the program decisions and the Board of Health makes the decisions about the physical part of the building. And I want to reemphasize that in whatever way possible that to make sure that everybody understands, including this gentleman that wrote the, the email, the Board of Health is not deciding whether or not we play sports. They're only deciding whether or not we can use the building to play sports in. And I, and I can't emphasize that enough. We have to, you know, we've tried to make that clear, and I thought we did, but apparently this gentleman didn't get the memo. So I just wanted to reemphasize that fact that we are working together with the Board of Health making decisions, but they are not pulling the program strings here. We do that. Thanks, Bill. Hey, since you're talking, Bill, you, oh, excuse me. Actually, you know, not, Bill? not only that, Bill, but in the case of the hockey program, it's not even our board of health that would have anything to do with it. It's the Greenfield board of health. Cause that's where they play. That's correct. That's <laughs> correct. Missy, do you have your hand up? I do. Um, I, I'm curious whether or not uh, Darius, if you have had any communication in regards to, as we move forward with the, Vaccine and teachers become eligible if that's something that the school is working on coordinating or if that's something that's being coordinated elsewhere? The question. Um, right now, we have not been contacted by the state about how that's going to be un unrolling. I think you're kind of seeing, you're hearing a lot of the national attention on it, but I think we're also seeing that locally, um, you know, I'm trying to get a figure out of how well or poorly Massachusetts is doing it. And Missy, you may even know better than I in that area. I, I will say that we have been doing very well um, yeah. in terms of rollout with the vaccine. So right now, I believe I just saw that first responders are kind of the next one ticking on the list. And then I believe after that, it's going to be um, uh, older, you know, older citizens. And then it's going to go into phase two, which includes teachers. So they haven't given us any kind of rollout model for that. Um, I, I am kind of confident that Franklin County has does have their kind of their act together, and they have been talking about vaccination distribution since I think September as part of some of those meetings that uh, we've been a part of. Um, and they started doing that with the uh, the flu vaccination rollout. Um, they, they, they were purposely thinking about what do we, how are we going to do this in a greater level. We also have the ability to store the vaccination in Franklin County and in, in in the Deerfield. Um, um, I'm not sure. I call it the Deerfield Office of you know the Boards of Health to have to have the have the refrigeration ability as well. So I have a feeling we will be probably labeled as one of those sites, or, or I hope. I think you know, um, you know we'll, we'll talk with the. I'll have a conversation with Carolyn and see what she hears about that. But you know, Carolyn Ness would know 
Um, Carol, as you guys may know, she runs the Mohawk Coalition of Boards of Health. So, you know, anything that happens in Franklin County is going to be going across her kind of her bow as well. So we're, we're fortunate to have that as well. So I don't know when it is, but if we can keep on the timeline, it should be it should be February. You know, so <clears throat> I'm being optimistic. They said two months, February. They said February, March in the report, but it, I, it was, you know, I'll give the first month in my statement. <clears throat> And uh, Darius, to bounce off uh, Missy's question, um, and maybe we don't even have any in this community, but how will we address, and maybe this is a student question too, I assume there is a small population of, of students and maybe teachers who are anti-vaccination, -vac and how will we address uh, that part of it? It's an excellent question. I'll, I'll get the answer for you that. It's, it's going to be a legal question because us because look at us as employers if we have employees that refuse vaccination but also want accommodations that don't if the question the question is i mean you can refuse vaccination but you, you come to work right you know so the question is can you force someone to get vaccinated and by an employer and the legal it's being spun around i've, I've seen it as part of the legal chats they're talking about they're starting to hit the list serve it's one of those things that you know. Um, I'll get the answer to when I have it, and I'll be bringing it to all of you about how we approach the employer. What are requirements around vaccination? What are the options for our employees? We want to make sure we have all their their legal rights in mind, and then what our rights are as employers and for safety of all involved. So, excellent question, but it's a loaded one right on the answer. All right, thanks. And I don't know if this helps at all, but from. Uh, from the hospital standpoint, uh, there were some concerns about how many employees might feel uncomfortable getting the vaccine initially. And by far, the response has been much more positive that people have been uh, have been kind of knocking down doors to try to get in line to get this vaccine or one of the two of the vaccines that are out there now. And um, uh, that has been a, a welcome a welcome scene from from hospital administration uh, perspective because then it makes that that smaller portion of people who aren't getting the vaccine less likely to have a significant impact on the benefit of having people vaccinated so but don't don't we have a policy on vaccinations already on childhood vaccine childhood disease vaccinations so Phil, you bring up an extra. These are all good. This is a, it's a good night to talk about this because there's not a lot on the agenda. But the um, it's a good question because the vaccinations are for 16 and older right now, I believe. And so, what are we going to do with our younger population? And then, you know, some of these, some of our COVID, we're going to have to get direction about how are we treating. You know, if every if all the adults are vaccinated, are we still wearing masks? And I think the early indicators are yes. Out of the gate, it's going to be that way. And so, you know, how is that? We're going to have to. We're gonna have to go through all those steps moving forward. And so that's what our spring, at least we're building towards something instead of defensing something. I, you know, I don't know, it's, a, it's I'm, I'm happy we're headed that direction, but those are all problems we're gonna to have to face. Please wear a mask if you get vaccinated. <laughs> we are not there yet. <laughs> right. A lot of us are all the way at the end of the line for that vaccination too. Cool. Which is why it's really important if you get the vaccine that you wear a mask to, because it's not known yet whether or not you can still spread it to somebody else. Yep, yep. Hey, Bill, you want to give give everybody a little update on the uh, proposed budget? What, what yeah. you know? Yeah, we had our first meeting tonight, and as everyone would expect, everything is this is going to be a more protracted process than usual because – Nothing, a lot of things aren't happening. State numbers aren't being generated. Cherry sheet numbers aren't generated. We don't We don't know a lot about a lot of things at this point in time. So we had an initial meeting and we're just kind of circling the airport. We have nothing to release. We have no information to put out because we just, there, there isn't any, enough to make an intelligent presentation at this time. Does anybody have a question for Bill before, I mean, he's, Short and sweet. I mean, there isn't anything, but if somebody has another question, other than Conway giving us some more money, maybe. <laughs> and in an, another brighter note, uh, Yankee uh, Candle was. Somebody says something. Yankee Candle has made a nice donation to Frontier again. And um, George, you want to come on on? 
And that was a part of my report. Yeah, Bob. So yeah, once again, so um, Yankee Candle has been generous enough to donate uh, $4,000 to Frontier. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a wonderful thing. So so yeah, so Phil, that's gonna I, that'll take a dent out of some of the money that you're gonna you're gonna be pushing our way as well. <laughs> wow. Hey, so we need uh, we need a motion and a vote on um, on on the donation. So if somebody wants to make a motion, move to accept the donation, Mr. Chair, with gratitude. Yeah. Second. Phil, second. Oh, Olivia, second it. And roll call, Judy. Um. Yes. Ben? I'm sorry, is she waving? When? Where'd she go? She's saying yes. I can tell. It's in her eyes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Phil? Yes. Olivia? Yes. Judy, yes. Mary? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Keith? Yes. Melissa? Yes. And Bill? Yep. Great. Right. Good job. Thank you. Um, I just want to wish everybody a happy new year. Hopefully, uh, 2021 will be a better year. Um, I turned 64 on Saturday and I couldn't get, couldn't wait to get rid of 2020. It's me personally, part of the year was all right, but the rest of it was pretty crappy. So I'm hoping that 2021 will be better for everybody. Everybody will get vaccinated. Um, you know. Life is good, hopefully, in 2021. So uh, any I don't think we have anything from the collaborative, Lynn. There's no meeting. Uh, George, you, I saw your principal before. You want to say anything else? No, that's okay. okay. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Darius? Yep, I got a, a brief announcement as well, some announcements. One, I also had a birthday on Saturday. Me and Bob share the same birthday. Oh. We can party together next year. Um, <laughs> I do also want to recognize that um, it will put it on the, the next agenda. Um, it came out, we got this probably at the same time we were creating these agendas, but Deerfield Academy, Deerfield Academy donated 25000 to our Deerfield and Frontier School Service Program, split between the two programs, um, to help offset the loss that um, we had this year. I really wanted to thank... Um, you know, John Austin, the head of school at Deerfield Academy for making this donation possible. So we'll be bringing that formally, but it was in the paper, I believe. And so I want to make sure that I get that announcement out there, but we'll, we'll vote to accept that formally at the next meeting. Um, the next thing on my list is MCAS. We did get a report out from DESE today regarding MCAS. They are going to be moving forward with MCAS this spring. Um, you'll start to hear a lot of talk about this. This is controversial um, in the sense that some people are concerned about loss of class time, especially if we're getting students back in person this spring. Um, but they, they they have decided that grades three through eight, they're gonna give a shortened sessions. So that'll affect our middle school, uh, and those obviously in the elementary committees, um, with kind of a sampling from each portion of the MCAS assessment. You know, the big, the big, the thought coming from Desi is that we really be able to need to be able to take in a, you know, an assessment that we've used for the years to take a look at where our students are and how, you know, COVID has affected them. Like I, I do um, receive some emails about, you know, some community push that we should be not testing them. And a part of me wants to know, um, a large part of me wants to know where, how our kids are doing and what are the gaps going to be and how are we going to, you know, what are we going to need to do to prepare that? And using a test like MCAS that we have tracked over time, we'll be able to see trends and that kind of thing. So um, the uh, competency determination, you know, basically passing the MCAS to graduate, um, they've also tied that that you can connect that to courses within the schools with passing grades. And it looks like they're going to move um, the science test and the um, the regular administration of the test. Now we have two of them because we didn't have 10th grade test last year to later this spring as well. So there's going to be um, a lot of work for Sarah Mitchell regarding um, the amount of testing um, that's taking place. So um any, any questions on that? And I can send you the, you know, they'll send out the um, the notice I got from the from Desi if you have any questions on that. So does that mean that our current 10th graders will take the science as well as last year, the oh, juniors, because they didn't get it last year? Because there's usually a 10th grade MCAS part. I believe, 
if Sarah, you're there, you're the MCAS <laughs> queen. Um, yeah, so we're, we're still working out some of those details um, because our 10th graders, uh, last year when they were in ninth grade, they took the SciTech class. Right. And mm -hmm. so we had them all geared up to take the SciTech test last spring, and obviously it didn't happen. Right. Um, so we have a limited number of students that are going to be taking the biology this year. And so we're going to try to determine what makes the most sense for that class. And it may come down to a student by student decision. Um, so we may prep some of them to take the SciTech if the state is still going to allow us to um, do that test um, and then have some of the students that are already enrolled in biology take the biology. So I think it's going to come, we're really going to be looking at student by student to determine that. Okay. Thank you. The other, the other small note that I forgot to mention on that was the Mackinac hold schools accountable to the test, the accountability rankings that they had, you know, uh, those schools that were in, you uh, know, you know, received them, were failure needs improvement. That they're not going to do the ranking. They're going to carry your ranking forward. So they're not going to use that. Um, you know, if they're ranking of schools. And I, I really, I think that I'm not worried about that kind of thing. I, I really think you look at the disruption of education across the state, and our district's done very well um, comparative to. And I think I've said this a thousand times to you, to you folks regarding um, you know the you know, more you know more urban districts and the districts that just don't have the supports at home um, to help students. You know. With remote learning, um, and so you have you know you have other you know more urban districts with you know participation rate participation rates below fifty percent, you know um, just massive you know, and, and just the size of their schools alone, you know their size of schools districts that are larger than Franklin County, you know what I mean where you have less than fifty percent participating every day in classes, I mean you're talking about the impact that's going to have on education. I'm I'm not worried about standardized testing in our district in the sense of um, publicity wise or concerns of you know our, our marks being okay. Um, people will use it as, you know, as a tool um, to make sure we get the, where the needs are needs are met. Um, whatever that's <laughs> um, oh, I'm, I'm talking my report. Um, and then the next thing I want to say welcome is I want to welcome uh, Jeff McDonald as our new ser food service director. Um, Jeffrey comes from us from uh, UMass Amherst Food Service, and he began work with a little bit of overlap with Mary right before the break, and Mary and her family, as we all know, has left us, and we wish her well, and we welcome Jeff aboard. It's his first full week. I didn't, I'll bring him here to introduce him to all of you, but I figured in his first week on the job to, to put him to one school committee meeting after another um, was probably not the nicest way to bring him on board. But, so I'll eventually bring him here to introduce you, but we're very happy to have him aboard. He hit the ground running, um, and we think we got a very good hire. So, uh, Can, what's his last name again? Jeff what? Jeff, um, Thanks. And Jeffrey uh, is the G, Jeffrey. Jeffrey with a G. G and G Jeffrey with a G. Thank I want you. to tell him a little bit more. Yeah. And then the last thing on my superintendent report is just a, a, a courtesy reminder to school committee members that um, we do get a lot of information regarding students, employees, and that kind of thing regarding COVID and any other things that we discuss. And I just want people to make sure that you know, we do not use those names when we talk to, we post, we talk online, we talk to other people, even though, even if it's assumed, try not to use people's names when it, when it ties to, you know, their protections, even though it may be considered public knowledge. You're in a position where your employers, and if you're talking about your employees or students, um, you don't want to, you don't want to um, be doing that. So if you're on an online chat or that kind of stuff, make sure you don't um, use people's names and that kind of stuff. Just a general reminder um, out there, I'm giving it to all the school committees. Um, at least done anything wrong or anything like that. I just, it's, there's a lot of time when we start talking about, oh, did you hear about so-and-so and that kind of stuff. Um, we just have to be careful um, that we are, you know, we are bound by confidentiality of those things. Um, and sometimes that information gets shared with you um, and either should it have been and we need to stop it at each step of the way. So, thank you, that's it. And we're not gonna have an executive session tonight and Need a motion to adjourn. So move, Mr. Chair. I'll second it. Um, yes. Bob? Yes. Lynn? Yeah. Phil? Yes. Phil? Yes. Judy, yes. Mary? Yes. Damien? Yes. Keith? Yes. Melissa? Yes. And Olivia? Yes. Thank you. Everybody have a good week. You too. Thanks. Happy belated Thanks. birthday. Yes. Thanks. To you both. <laughs> yes. <laughs>